One, two, three. Ready to do this? Lately, it feels like recon has become a very big part of bug bounties. I see a lot of people talking about how they have been using recon to find these really cool vulnerabilities that's resulted in them getting a very big bounty. So in short, recon does win in some cases. What I want to talk about today is how the recon methodology changes depending on what hackers you talk to and what programs you're hacking on. And that means that you don't apply the same methodology from a program that has one of their assets in scope versus a program that pretty much has every single thing that they own in their infrastructure within their bug bounty program. Here's seven tips that I've created that's personally helped me uh, get better with hacking, use my time wiser, and also find really cool bugs that has given me a better bounty. Understand your scope. Like I said earlier, when you're hacking on a bug bounty program, you don't apply the same approach from a company where they have listed only one asset in their scope in comparison to another company where they have every single domain and subdomain or IP address within their bug bounty program. So when I start hacking on these programs where they only have one asset in scope, I try to apply my own approach of going and looking at what this application is built for and what it's really meant to do. So when I start looking at these applications, I ask myself a couple of questions. And the more questions I ask, the more answers I get, the more I understand the application. So some of the questions I ask myself is, first of all, what is this app truly built to do? What kind of user roles exist? And what do these users have access to in regards to applications? Obviously, if you are an admin, you have access to more stuff and versus a user who is a lower level user that can do the same things as an admin. So then once I understand what these users are supposed to do, I ask myself, how do they interact with each other? What can I do as a low level user to elevate my access to maybe access some of those API endpoints that are built for an admin? So once I figured out what these users are supposed to do and what kind of information they have access to, I tried to see if what information is truly meant to be public versus the ones that are supposed to be private. Once I figured out that information, I want to be able to see if I can access that information without being logged in, or maybe if it's meant to be for admins, if I can access that as a user without admin privileges. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do any automation here, but of course that automation is different than what you do when you're hacking on a program where it has a lot of things in scope. So what I do for these assets is I try to develop an approach where I start looking at JavaScript files in order to find those endpoints that are hidden or maybe my user doesn't have access to. So that doesn't mean that I'm not doing any automation. It just means that my automation is built around the scope of this program where I'm only going after a certain thing. And I can do all of that by using tools like JS Parser, where it, what it does is it will take every single JavaScript endpoint, it will highlight it for me so I can see them within my tool and I can also start fuzzing them. So in short, it doesn't mean that I'm not doing recon, it just means that I'm doing recon differently. And I use other tools that are given to me without relying on a wide scope, but I just want to focus on things that matter to me. Automation. Now imagine you're hacking on a program where they have listed every single domain and subdomain they own within their scope. So when you're going after all these subdomains, you're practically going after you know hundreds and thousands of different applications and you want to be able to use your time wisely. So for me, I've automated a bunch of tasks. I've broken down my methodology in three different huge buckets. And each of these buckets perform a different task and it results in giving me the information that I need. The first one is asset discovery. In this bucket, I try to find and enumerate as many subdomains as I can uh, using tools like Sublister, NogPy, or even going as far as using services like Shodan, Census, SearchSpotter, and so on. The entire goal of this bucket is to get me, again, as many supplements as I can and not worry about running these tools one by one and fetching them on my own. Number two is content gathering. This is where I start to automate the idea of finding every interesting folder, every single endpoint, and getting a visual of what every target looks like. So then once I find an important app, I have it run directory brute forcing and so on. I also use tools like web screenshot pie where I have it take a screenshot of every application and then I feed it to another tool where it makes me an entire gallery of every single asset that I've taken a screenshot of. I simply do this because I don't have the time to go out there and click on different domains and see what they look like. So I rely on this gallery to show me things that are interesting. Fuzzing. So once I've done my asset discovery and I've gone all the interesting endpoints, I start fuzzing them. This is a similar approach to my uh, tip number one where I talked about uh, knowing your scope, but it's a little bit different as well because sometimes I'm blindly finding these different endpoints where I have no clue what they do. So I take a manual approach on going onto these endpoints using Burp, my browser, whatever else I'm looking at, I'm trying to understand what this endpoint is supposed to do and how I can use it to exploit a vulnerability. But automation doesn't end there. I've also made a number of bash aliases and these are mainly things that I type in instead of having to type in the entire syntax for a tool. So when I'm using directory brute forcing tools like Dyer Search, I type in directory brute force, domain, and extension. So that I don't have to type in the entire syntax and I have to go to the help documents 
and then remember how to use these tools. If you're interested in how I do content gathering, asset discovery, and fuzzing, I've done an entire talk about it last year. I'll leave the link to it down below in the description. You can also check out my GitHub and some of the tools that I've written around these three topics. Searching for answers. Whether I'm searching for additional subdomains or looking for how an endpoint works, I'm always putting these things into either a Google search or a GitHub search. And I don't just stop doing that where it comes down to putting in the endpoints. I also do things like putting in the results and error, whatever the application is giving back to me to kind of get a sense of an idea of what these particular things are supposed to do. And in some cases, I was actually able to find the application I was fuzzing and get access to additional endpoints that allow me to find a vulnerability on this particular site. So don't be afraid to look things up. Believe me when I say that you might not find the right answer, but it's going to give you an idea of what to do next or how to approach this particular endpoint. Keeping historic data. Storing every single report, every single output from every single tool you use, it might not be scalable or it might not make sense to you. It all comes down to how you store your data and how you're taking care of it. For example, one of the things that I do is every time I scan a target, I make a folder for it. And within that target folder, I make another folder that has the date where I scan them. And within that folder, I'll have the outputs of some of my tools that I want to keep just in case it comes up later on. So some of the things that I keep is the directory brute force results, some of the headers that I've collected and the ports that are open and other things that I've used and other tools that matter to me. Fingerprinting. What I mean by fingerprinting is the idea of finding unique ways to identify an application or a vulnerable endpoint across multiple companies or domains. I usually go through my historic data or use tools like Shodan and Census to come up with instances of GitLab, GitHub, Jenkins, and other tools that some companies might use in the development process. In order for this to work for you, you have to familiarize yourself with these applications. So don't be afraid to spin these up locally or get a free trial in order to understand what endpoints, what headers, and what file names makes them unique to identify them as this particular set of apps. So for example, if you're looking for Atlassian, uh, example Jira or Confluence, there are some keywords that you can look up to identify within your directory brute force or headers or using Shodan to find every instance of this on the internet or site that you're hacking on. Fingerprint doesn't just stop at having to look for those applications. It could also be how a company operates and builds their infrastructure. So for example, if you fingerprint and understand how they create development staging or prod sites, that gives you an advantage to understand your application or the company that you're going against. Look for patterns. What I mean by that is when I'm looking for bugs, I'm not just looking for a particular set of vulnerabilities. I try to identify patterns and things that I've seen on other programs or maybe in other application that's owned by this company. You can also take this a step further by looking through all your data that you have collected in the past and seeing if this endpoint parameter or vulnerability has shown itself elsewhere on other sites, other companies, or even other applications. So always go through your historic data and look at them and see if you can find those vulnerabilities elsewhere as well learn from others. There's no better way of getting more information about a particular target than working with other hackers who may have already approached this target and have some data based on their scans and reports that they have done in the past. This doesn't mean that you should expect other hackers to share their data with you. We can also rely on reading blog posts, uh, tweets, or even reports that have been published on the activity on HackerOne to understand how they have found these vulnerabilities and making your own approach around identifying them as well. So what I mean by that is, if somebody releases a blog post, I find it pretty neat, what I'll do is I'll try to fully understand what this bug does, how do they find it, and find a way for me to fingerprint and find a way to automatically look for these as I'm scanning for new targets or new programs that I have done. But it doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop there with new programs. I can also run a script that goes through all my old previous data and matches these headers or different endpoints to see if I've ever came across from them. So I wanna challenge you all to doing this following thing. The next time you see a neat vulnerability somewhere when it's been published on the activity or on a blog post, I want you to find a way to replicate it. Whether that means to install this instance locally and playing with it, or even going out in the wild and looking for other bug bounty programs that may be vulnerable to similar vulnerabilities. This will help you with all the other tips that I've given you to fingerprint, automate, and also fuzz the right things in order to find those neat vulnerabilities. Now here's the truth about recon. There is no right or wrong way of doing any of this. It doesn't mean that you have to follow the guidelines that I have given you, and it doesn't mean that you have to approach every target the similar way that I do. It all comes down to what you as a hacker care about and what are the goals that you wanna accomplish by doing recon and automation. And it definitely doesn't mean that you have to do all of this overnight and write a code that you push in a button and it gives you out vulnerabilities. It means that you have to find out what you care about, what you want to automate, and start doing those things one by one. So for me, when I started writing out my tools and as I mentioned earlier I broke down my workload into three different buckets and then I started focusing on that bucket and all the subtasks that comes with it. So what that means is I want to make sure I have a stable and reliable process for each bucket before I move on to the next. 
And then after I have built all these tools and I've mastered every single bucket, I started put them all together into one single command where I can run a code or a tool. I can say recon, you know, a domain or a company. And it does all these different subtasks for me without me having to do them manually. I could probably go on with another dozen tips and tricks on how to do recon. But at the end of the day, these were the big ones that stood out for me and I found valuable. If you think I've missed any cool tricks or tips, or you have came up with a cool, neat trick that you do in your recon, please leave me a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time.